Hello and welcome back to Lunch Break Heroes. We're going to be talking about more Curse of Strahd companions here in Volume 3 of this series. Today we've got Kazimir Velikov, Sir Godfrey, Vasilka the Flesh Golem, and Stella Wachter. First up to bat is Kazimir Velikov, the leader of what is left of the Dusk Elf population in Barovia. Hundreds of years ago, Casimir's sister Petrina had the hots for Strahd, and naturally, Casimir and the other Dusk Elves didn't want this relationship to go any further. They didn't want Petrina to fall to darkness, so of course, they stoned her to death. Kind of a silly thing to do in my opinion, and it didn't work out so well for them. Strahd murdered all of their women and left the men to die a long and very slow death. All right, so what is Casimir's motivation behind traveling with your party throughout this adventure? Well, he's seeking redemption, both in his own eyes and in the eyes of his dead sister. He also wants to bring her back to life, and he thinks he has a pretty good idea of how to do that. You see, Casimir's been in contact with Petrina through his dreams. Elves don't really sleep, they do this whole trance thing, but anyways, he's been talking with Petrina, and Petrina's been feeding him information. She knows about the Amber Temple, and that the secret to bringing her back to life lies within its dark halls. Well, so Casimir's all over this idea. He wants to go to the Amber Temple. He wants to do whatever it takes to bring his sister back, even if that means his death or <laughs> releasing a dark god. It's all up in the air, but he's totally down for all of it. So how do you earn his trust? Well, that's incredibly difficult. and maybe even impossible. However, getting him to travel with your party is pretty easy. He wants to go to the Amber Temple, and your party seems like a great way for him to get there. He's not a fantastic combatant on his own, so if he has your party to protect him and get him where he needs to go within the temple, he's ready to go with you. However, in order to get him to fight Strahd, well, that's another matter entirely. You're going to have to help him resurrect Petrina. Only then will he fight Strahd with you. However, resurrecting Petrina can cause a whole lot of other issues, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So what are the pros and cons of having Casimir as an ally? Well, on the pro side, he's a powerful spellcaster. And this can really help out your party, especially if they don't have an arcane spellcaster of their own. Even if they do, it's nice to have another one. In addition to that, he's on great terms with the Vistani. He's been living with them for generations. So if you need to go between between you and the Vistani, he's totally your guy. On top of all that, he's the leader of the Dusk Elves. Now the Dusk Elves don't come into play much, at least in the actual written module. However, you can work them into your game however you want. There's any number of Dusk Elves. Take your pick, choose a number, it doesn't matter. You know, probably a few hundred tops. But they live in the forests. They know the forests. They can find out basically any information you want. They can lead you anywhere you want. These are excellent guides and excellent spies. So take advantage of his position of authority over the rest of the Dusk Elves. On the con side, Casimir is willing to die in order to resurrect his sister. So if push comes to shove, Casimir might not make it out of the Amber Temple in order to help you fight Strahd. In addition, and on top of that, Resurrecting Petrina is probably not a good idea. Petrina is not a very nice person, despite everything Casimir says. She was going after Strahd's power when she was courting him. That's right, Strahd wasn't courting her. Petrina was totally going after him. She wants to become a vampire even more powerful than Strahd. She's an incredibly powerful spellcaster. She uses the Archmage stat block. So if you resurrect her, if you bring her back, Sure, she might become an ally temporarily and help you trounce Strahd, but only to become the new Dark Lord. Before we talk about that next ally, you gotta know, you can get this guide and all of the other Lunch Break Heroes guides to download and keep forever over on Patreon. Go ahead and check it out, it's just a dollar. If you don't want to do that, perfectly fine, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. That being said, let's talk about our next companion. Next up, we have Vasilka, the Flesh Golem. She's basically Frankenstein, except, you know, she's being created by a fallen angel in an abbey. 
Now, Vasilka doesn't have much of a personality of her own, especially as written. She's a completely blank slate. Flesh golems, as you know, they're written in the monster manual, they only follow the orders that they're given. There's no personality or anything there. But with a bit of work, I think you can make Vasilka a very compelling and interesting companion. As you probably know, the Abbot has been training Vasilka for quite a long time on the ins and the outs of etiquette and fine dining and how to dress and behave properly like a lady. He is going to present her to the, the noble lord of the land, so you know he's taught her everything she needs to know in order to impress Strahd. Obviously, none of it's going to work. He's gonna, you know, hate her and whatnot, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. If she's your companion, you're never gonna get to that point. So, what is the, the motivation for Vasilka even coming with you? Well, the abbot has been drilling her that she is to meet Strahd. She is going to go be with Strahd. He, the Strahd is a great guy. She's gonna love Strahd. And Vasilka has a very simple mind. This concept of, I have to meet Strahd, is basically all that it can hold. So if your party promises her that, yeah, we can go take you to Strahd, she's totally gung-ho. She's going to leave the abbot because he's not taking her to see Strahd. You are. So she's going to hightail it out of the abbey with you guys, even if that means having to kill the abbot to do it. So what about earning her trust? Well, thankfully, her mind's pretty simple. She doesn't even have a concept of what trust is. She's just going to follow your orders in order to achieve her end goal of finding Strahd. As long as you command her to, you know, do this, do that, with the idea that meeting Strahd is what she's going to eventually do, she trusts you implicitly, even if she doesn't know what trust is. So what are the pros and cons of having Vasilka as an ally? Well, on the pro side, Vasilka's a freaking tank. I mean, Frankenstein's monster could smash and just urgh, all over the place, and Vasilka's no exception. She's got some fantastic combat stats, even if her berserk capability is a bit of a liability, but she's no slump. As long as you point her at a target and you say, go hit it, she's gonna do that, and she's gonna do it hard. Additionally, if you have anybody in your party with a lightning cantrip, they can heal her. The flesh golems absorb lightning and turn it into hit points. It's fantastic. On top of that, Vasilka knows all there is to know about etiquette. So if you're ever in polite society, let's say you're having you know, lunch with the burgomaster or the walkers or whatnot, Vasilka can behave herself. She can impress these people even, as long as you can cover up the fact that she's kind of an abomination. On the con side, we have the fact that Vasilka is kind of an abomination. If people ever find out what she is, they're going to treat her with just this horrific revulsion, and they'll probably shun your party as well. In addition to that, she shows no real initiative of her own. She's there to follow orders. It's what she does. She's a flesh golem. They have no real mind or motivations of their own. So if you want Vasilka to do something, you have to explicitly tell her to do that. This extends into combat. Vasilka will literally just stand there and just take hits unless she's told to fight back. Now, in battle, she is a bit of a two-edged sword. Now, I said she would just stand there and take hits, but if she succumbs to her berserk feature, uh, she's going to start throwing those fists around, and she doesn't care who she hits, even if it's your party. Next up, we have Sir Godfrey Gwillem, one of the revenants of Argon Vostold. Godfrey is such a... he's a really cool character, especially in, in, in my mind. I've envisioned him as just this force of light and love that has been really dragged through the mud by Vladimir's hatred. Now you see, Sir Godfrey and Sir Vladimir were lovers once upon a time when they were alive. When Strahd destroyed the Order of the Silver Dragon, Vladimir's hatred literally warped the weave and created a magic of its own that brought all these knights back from the dead for revenge. And it was only Sir Godfrey's love for Vladimir that balanced the whole thing out and allowed some of them to keep their minds and their souls. 
If you've paid attention to our guides, if you've you know looked at the Argon Vostal guide, you'll know that this magic is waning, and that's why some of the revenants in Argon Vostal are a bit hostile, and others are not. The clock is ticking, though. Godfrey and the others are slowly going to lose their minds unless you help them, unless you help them complete some unfinished business. Now, if Godfrey is your ally, he will, of course, not lose his mind. He'll keep his wits about him, but he still wants to redeem Vladimir, okay? If he can send Vladimir off to rest, Godfrey's going to become a pretty pleasant character. And if he can't, well, he's going to be Broody McBruderson the whole way through. So what is Sir Godfrey's motivation in all of this? Well, like I said, he wants to redeem Vladimir Horngard, the love of his life. In addition to that, he's got one hell of a grudge against Strahd, and he really wants to kill that guy. So how do you earn his trust? Well, as soon as you walk into the room, Godfrey's going to take one look at you, and he's going to feel the pull of fate. He's going to know that there's something that he has to do with your party. But before he does that, well, of course, he wants your help in redeeming the Revenants. Okay? Even if you fail in that, Godfrey is still going to go with you. Like I said earlier, if you can redeem Vladimir, he's going to be happy and charming and all of that. And if you don't, well, he'll still help you fight Strahd, but he's not going to be very happy. So what are the pros and cons of having this undead revenant as a party member? Well, on the pro side, we have the fact that he is, of course, an undead revenant. As long as Strahd lives, Godfrey's not going anywhere. Godfrey can be killed, and he'll just come right back in the body of some other corpse. It might take a few days to get back to your party, but he will always come back. Now, he knows this, and he makes no secret about it. It's happened before, and this makes him particularly qualified for very suicidal missions. In addition to that, Godfrey is a very powerful spellcaster. He's got a lot of paladin spells at his disposal, in addition to some support spells that your party might find very useful. On the con side, we have the fact that he is an undead revenant. Um, nobody in Barovia is going to like dealing with an undead revenant. Just like Vesilka being an abomination that people are going to be scared of, they're going to be even more scared of this walking piece of rotting flesh. On top of that, if your party does not light the beacon at Argon Vostal, Godfrey's alignment remains evil, and he's kind of a pain in the butt to be around. He's not terribly nice. He's very gruff and very short with your characters, and yeah, he's, he's not a whole lot of fun. He's always grinding his teeth. It, it keeps people up at night. Lastly, Godfrey has got this unquenchable hatred towards Strahd that makes him a bit more reckless than other companions might be when faced with the Vampire Lord. Now, he's going to throw caution to the wind as soon as he lays eyes on Strahd. He's going to whip out his sword or a spell or whatnot, and he's going to charge in headlong. That can put your party into a lot of danger if they're trying to be stealthy or they're trying to plan a tactical maneuver. Godfrey's just going to go in, guns blazing, and all the consequences be damned. So, be careful with that. Last up, we have Stella Wachter, the youngest child of the influential Wachter family over in Velaki. Stella was the victim of an unfortunate planned marriage between the Wachter family and the Velakovich family, the current leaders of the town of Velaki. Uh, she was betrothed to Victor Velakovich. Now, we've already talked about Victor in this series. Victor's a bit of a, you know, a haphazard mage. So, unlike the module, which states that Victor was just really mean to Stella and she lost her mind, um, we're giving it a reason uh, that she lost her mind. So, Victor wasn't mean to her at all. In fact, he was quite friendly. He liked her. But Stella, you know, she confided in him that she thought Barovia to be very bland and very colorless, and she really wanted to see the worlds that were described in the books in her family's library. They're, they're colorful, they're happy, and Victor wanted to give her that. He wanted to impress her with his magic, so he tried to cast a dream spell on her, which was just a bit out of his reach. You see, the text that he found in his father's library described the process of casting this spell. Uh, step one was emptying out the mind of the person. He managed that, but not a whole lot else, and he ended up casting a feeble mind spell on her instead. So what is Stella's motivation behind becoming an ally to your party? 
Well, once your party cures her of her madness and returns her sense of self, she wants to repay their kindness. Stella is probably the one actual altruist in all of Barovia. She's one of the few very genuinely nice people that your party is going to meet. A lot of this is due to the fact that she was uh, brought up in a very sheltered environment. So the life of a typical Barovian didn't have a chance to come and beat her down. She wasn't exposed to the realities of her own world. She wasn't quite as sheltered as, say, um, Gertruda, but uh, she, she, she was insulated. Okay, let's put it that way. So she retained a lot of the childlike kindness, and that's extended into her, her current personality. And all that she's went through with losing her mind and acting like a cat for several months, well, that's really just reinforced the, the kindness of her own soul. So if she has any opportunity to repay the kindness that your party has done to her, she's going to go along with it. So how do you earn her trust? Well, easy. You just cure her of her madness and she's yours. Now, curing her of that madness is going to be a bit of a trick because it requires a greater restoration spell. That's going to be out of the reach of most parties at that particular level. So what are the pros and cons of having Stella as an ally? Well, over on the pro side, we have the fact that she's basically a one-person glee club. There is absolutely nothing that is going to get Stella down. She has just this indomitable spirit that no amount of zombies and vampires is going to crush, okay? She's always going to be making light of a situation, making a joke, and trying to cheer up the party members. So if you've got a party of characters that are just dragged through the mud and beat down and they're like, we gotta get out of here, well, Stella could be a breath of fresh air. In addition to that, if your party wants to do something about the political situation in Velaki, Stella's probably the key. You see, all of Velaki basically hates the Velakoviches and the Wachters, but Stella is the exception. Everybody that has had dealings with Stella loves her. She is just this impeccable character that everybody in town likes. Nobody has a bad thing to say about Stella. So if the Wachter family is, say, I don't know, wiped out, nobody has a problem with Stella taking over being the head of the Wachter family, becoming their representative. And if the Volokoviches are no longer in the picture, heck, maybe Stella can even become the Burgomaster. On the flip side of things, Stella is about as useless as they come on the battlefield. She's got the commoner stat block, so she is actually more of a liability than an asset. Your party is going to expend more resources trying to keep her safe than she is actually going to contribute to any combat scenario. Granted, she is still the fated ally, Strahd's enemy, so she can use the inspiration feature in that battle, but that's literally it. In addition, Stella is naive and gullible. She's always willing to believe the best in people and she wants to help them out. However, her resources for helping people out are finite and she is likely to squander them. If she walks through an alley full of beggars, I can guarantee you she's gonna give a gold coin to each and every one of them until her pockets are empty. And if her finite resources don't stretch far enough to help all the people that she sees in need, well, that's likely to break her. Lastly, it's entirely possible that Stella won't be able to come with a party at all because they're never able to cure her madness. Like I said, it requires a greater restoration spell, which is outside the reach of a lot of parties. Now, Van Richten might be able to help out, but it will definitely come with a cost and only if Van Richten likes the party. All right, so that's it for volume three. Stay tuned for volumes four and five coming up in the following weeks. In the meantime, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss those videos and come back here and see us next time.